Hey guys, Nate here with a short video on the most common mistake that I see on coding interviews as well as on the job as a data scientist. Let's get started right now. Alright, so the most common mistake that I see happens to both new and experienced data scientists and the same mistake happens both on the job as well as on coding interviews. And it happens on one of the most common questions a data scientist has to solve. All right, so the gist of the question is this. Find the highest or lowest value or record in the data set. Basically, you're just trying to find the minimum or maximum value that you see in the data set that you're analyzing. So why is this a common mistake that both new and experienced data scientists make? Let me show you an example to illustrate my point. You can follow along with me in the link that I provided in the description. So this question reads, highest cost orders by Amazon. The question reads, find the customer with the highest total order cost between February 1st, 2019 to May 1st, 2019. Output their first name, total cost of their items, and the date. So at first glance, this is super simple, right? You're just trying to find the highest total order cost and you're just gonna filter by a date range. So all you're gonna really do is add an order by and list the highest first and then do a limit one. So your solution could look something like this. So what I basically have is the total order cost here, which is a calculation of order cost and order quantity. And then I have this order date between, and I put in the date range here, February to March. And then in order to get the highest total order cost, all I really want to do is order by, and then sort it descending, so highest total order cost at the top, and then just take the top one, right? Take, the, take a limit one to get just the highest total order cost. And so nine out of 10 times, both new and experienced data scientists and analysts would actually solve the problem this way because in order to get the total order cost, this is the perfect way to do it, right? So the first question I wanna ask you guys is, is this solution correct? Obviously it's not because why would I be making this video if it's not? When you do read the question of finding the customer with the highest total order cost, you definitely are finding the highest total order cost in terms of the value that is outputted. But where the solution is wrong is that it actually doesn't consider the context of the question or multiple scenarios. So in this case, we're asked to output the first name, so the name of the customer, the total cost of their items, and the date. But what if there are multiple customers with the same total order cost? You're limiting by one, which means that you're only gonna get one customer. So context is very important. If I only cared about value, then this solution is correct. But if I cared about, for example, outputting a list of customers that have spent the most money on Amazon, then this solution is incorrect. So this is where most data scientists and analysts fall short is that they're not necessarily thinking about context of the business question as well as all of the scenarios and edge cases that can happen that are present in the data set. So this is why most inexperienced and even experienced data scientists get this question wrong. They just wanna jump into the code and solve the problem without really understanding the question behind the question. So if the question was instead posed like, let's find all the customers that have spent the most amount of money on Amazon so that we can reward them with loyalty points. I think you would solve this problem in a different way, right? But on an interview or even on the job, you don't always get all of the context. So it's really important for you guys to ask the interviewer or ask your business stakeholders what they're really trying to do with that information. And that will help you design a solution that solves their needs. So let's go through the real solution right now. So let's just really quick run this query to see what the highest total order cost is. So it's 400. Let's actually see how many customers spent $400. So let me get rid of this limit. We run the code. We see that our solution should have two customers here, Farida and Mia, because they both have spent 400. So we just need to design a solution where we output these two customers rather than limiting it to just one row. So it's actually pretty simple to do that. We can actually reuse a lot of this code. 
So what we want to do first is go back to the original query here where we limit by one. I'm going to take out this first name column. So if we run this code, what we have is the highest total order cost, which is 400. We're going to actually use this query. We're going to use it as a subquery because it's going to identify what the highest total order cost is. The only other thing we need to do is write a query where we output the first names and the dates of all the customers that spent 400. All right. And so in order to do that, we can reuse most of this code here. So let me just copy and paste it. And then also I'll put the first name as well as the date because we have the two tables being joined. We have the order date range that we care about. We can get rid of this order by and really the last step is to add logic where we're only considering customers that have spent 400. We can actually do this in the where clause. So we have in the where clause right now, the order date needs to be between these two date ranges. Then we can put and now I'm going to copy this total order cost here and say that the total order cost needs to be in basically a list of values that I give it, but I'm only going to give it one value. That's going to basically be 400. So I'll say in and then in, I'll have the subquery here. Right? So all this is saying is that the total order cost needs to basically be 400 because if we run this query here, the subquery, it's going to give us 400. So if I run this query, I get the two customers that have spent the most. If I check the solution, the solution is correct. Okay, so let's actually compare it to the first solution that we thought was correct. So again, the solution I showed before was just using an order by and a limit one. If we run this query, we only get the first customer, right? Mia, we don't get that second customer. And so it's definitely going to be wrong. So why do both inexperienced and experienced data scientists make this mistake? Well, for experienced data scientists, it could be just like rushing through the problem and not necessarily getting all the context that is needed. But for most inexperienced data scientists, I think one of the reasons why is because there's a large focus on taking courses and also doing projects from your school. So courses like courses from Udemy, for example, they focus on teaching you how to code. So they focus on syntax projects like projects from courses or schools. They often have clean data sets. So you don't have edge cases or real world scenarios that you have to actually think about and then solution for. So the code that you write, like this order by limit one code will work on a clean data set but it's not going to work on a real world data set where there are real world problems and there are data at scale issues that you really have to sort through. So how do you get better? Do problems that reflect real world situations. I would say if you understand the syntax and know how to code kind of well, do problems that reflect real world situations. If you're pretty good with syntax already, then start to transition over to a platform that has real world questions, that has data sets where there are real world scenarios that you need the solution for and edge cases that you need to compensate for in your solution. You can do interview problems even if you're not interviewing. These interview problems always have these real world situations that you need to deal with. That's what an interviewer is actually looking for. So I posted three resources in the description I personally used all three resources to help me get better as a data scientist. I even built one of these resources because I wanted to tackle this exact problem. So remember, a good data scientist can identify all of the scenarios, design the solution, and implement that solution through writing code and manipulating data. That's what you're graded on. So I hope this is helpful for you, even if it is obvious. So if you like content like this, covering these types of topics, please subscribe to this channel. Thank you.